Today we'll be looking at the art of reversing challenge, which is in the reversing category, obviously, on Hack the Box. It's retired, it's been retired for a long time, and the difficulty is, is rated as medium. So the description says, this is a program that generates product keys for a specific software brand. The input is the client username and the number of days that the software will remain on, active on the client. The output is the product key that the client will use to activate. Um, so we're given this pro product key and we're told to find the corresponding username, say A, and the number of activation days, say B, which would create this product key and then we submit those as our flag. So essentially this is we we're we're doing like a crack me, you know, a serial serial number generator for a piece of software. And rather than trying to find a serial which is gonna work with the program, we're told to try and find try and reverse that, take the serial and find what was the input into the algorithm essentially to generate it. So we download the file. Uh, I've already downloaded it and saved it here. We have the art reversing.exe. It's a Windows 32-bit executable, and we can see again here if you, if you followed the last challenge that I uploaded, it was also a .NET assembly, and in that we showed how we could use DNSpy to disassemble, uh, decompile the code, and do some debugging. With you know, it's a lot easier than uh, standard uh, executable files. So. We could check in here, we could try and have a look at the strings, but um, it's unlikely that we're just going to see, I mean, that the that the author would have left uh, the, the answer in there. So let's uh, jump straight over to Windows and see if we can decompile it. So we can disassemble this in dnspy because it's a .NET executable and that means that we can go and actually decompile it and have a look at the original code see here we have our form 1, we have the list of functions we want to start off, we want to trace our way back so this is the button that we click to create a product key and let's, do, let's go ahead and do that as well so let's put in username crypto activation days 420 and then if we create that you can see that the we can clearly see that this part of the key has a relation to the username that's been reordered um, we can't see exactly what the re relation is here with the activation days but that's obviously um, uh, what's what's being used to generate this here as well so we can potentially just go through and actually find out what the mapping is to reorder the username and we'll be able to calculate things that way but let's go back to dnspy and see what's going on here so from our button create we click it and it takes the username it trims the username and the number of days make sure that we oh, make sure that we, we enter both it then assigns text is equal to this text box username so we could go ahead and uh, start renaming stuff like this to make it a bit more obvious. So this should really be called username. Um, so just remember that the text is the username and num is the number of days. And we make sure that they're within the value ranges. We then perform some operations. So we have here int num2 is this npr. And we're taking in text.length. So the length of the username is a parameter here. And the result of you can see there's a few operations happening here the result of those operations is going to be divided by 2 and set to n to stop so the, it sounds like the number of loops that are going to occur is going to be based on the length of the username passed into this function and then divided by 2 then we have this word array this um, char array called word which is just taking our username as and and put it into a char array, and then it's calling get per on the on the username. And if we go to get per, see here it's taking the length, and we have uh, quite a few things happening. It looks like here we can see that 
this string is being added to here the ss out um, and this is looping around performing this do function which we have some XOR operations so there's quite a lot going on there let's let's go back to our button create click we know that this operation is occurring it's right into ss out which we can see here at the end so whenever we get our product key at the end that's actually ss out and text2 so ss out is our username reordered and we've we've done that in those functions we just went through text2 is generated here from this dot tour and it takes in num so the number of days so this is the one that we would be particularly interested in in terms of finding out our number of days it looks like it'll probably be easy enough for us to just calculate our username based on m manually going through the mapping so let's let's go back here and grab the the value that we need take a copy of it and let's open up this up in a text editor okay so this is what we want to try and work out let's forget the Um, number of days part at the moment. So how many characters do we have? Let's work this out. We'll do this in hex values until we have enough characters and if we enter that in as our key Taking a lot longer to generate, as you might notice, with the with a longer username. Not particularly. It's actually stopped responding as well. It's not a particularly efficient um, product key generator. Okay, there's the first part of our product key. So we can have a look and see how this has been reordered. And in using this, we can try to reverse our product key. So we know that. Uh, actually, let's move this here uh, and let's take this here as well. Let's see if I can do this um, without getting confused. So we want to we want to put it back into this order. This we put in this input. We got out this as an output. They put in some input here, which we're going to work out, and they got this output. So let's let's order it that way. So if we were trying to find what's the zero el element we put in, it would be here, which is H. If we were trying to find out what was the first element, it would be right here, which was A. If we were trying to find out what was the second element, it would be right here, which would be C. Uh, if we're trying to find out the third element, it would be over here, which would be K. So you can see here, it looks good. We've got hacks so far. Um, 4 would be here, so we've got T, 5 we have here, which is H, 6 is up here, we've got E, and then 7, you can kind of see where this is going. Hack the planet. So let's go back and let's paste this in, create the product key. Which takes quite a while for uh, for for the longer key. It's not very efficient. You can see here, not responding. It's not a very efficient serial generator. Uh, and you see then that we get out the result is our uh, this this value here. So we know that the username to get the key that we're looking for is hack the planet. So we found, if you remember, we were told to find a flag like this. We found so far hack the box, hack the planet, and then we need our days. We need to reverse the days. So, I mean, you could go through and kind of let's try 100. Okay, I was going to say you could brute force that. If you're going to brute force it, don't do it with a long username because we know that the username is not related to the activation days in any in any way 
that would be um, that would be a cool challenge, a little bit harder to like link the username to the activation days. So if we're doing this, just set the username as something simple. See here, it's just given us a D. Let's um, try and do 50. Oh, you need at least two characters. Oh, you need three characters. Okay, we've got an M, 51, JM, 52. So, yeah, I mean, you could play around. Let's go 200, 300, 365. <laughs> so, it's the. Um, you could probably just guess that as 365. It's a one year subscription. But obviously, that's not might not be viable we want to know how could we have found that without doing um, by guessing so it would have been cooler if we would have used like leap days or something but let's um if they would have used sorry um, so we know that the answer is 365 hack the planet we've got our flag let's go in and have a look and see in fact while we're here let's do hack the planet and let's wait another minute or so while it tries to work out the product key. Okay, and there we go. So we've got our original product key here. We know that we've got the right solution. Let's close this down. Let's get rid of, in fact let's keep this open in case we need it, and let's go and have a look and see how that's generated. So we know that we have we were dealing with the word variable for, now we're dealing with this num variable, that's the number of days, and it calls this.tor, and if we go into this.tor, saying if the number is less than, so make sure that the number is within the right range, and if it's greater than a thousand, it'll it'll return m plus this dot tour number minus a thousand. Okay, so it's kind of doing like a Roman numeral thing here. Let's um, what was the minimum number of days? Let me go back. A B C. Let's say one day. Must be between fifteen. Okay. Let's say sixteen. It gives J W Y. Okay, so it's converting to Roman numerals, but it's not actually printing out the Roman numerals as you notice there. So it gives us Roman numerals, it returns that, and then once that's returned, it calls this dot door. And here it's taking in our character array. It's reversing the order, and then it's looping through and and adding one to each um to each character and then it's converting it to lower and returning it. So let's um let's set a couple of breakpoints and see if we can just work through this. So we'll set a breakpoint here, we'll set a breakpoint here, we'll set a breakpoint here. Let's run the program. We'll say ABC, let's just say the lowest value we can use, which was sixteen. Create product key. Okay, and we get here and it's we have our num which is here, I wonder if can we Okay, so we can change that to decimal. Um so that's sixteen that we have in there. Let's um step into this and step over the statements. So as we go into the statements, the number is greater than a thousand. It wasn't, so it goes to the next one. It's going to keep going down until it gets to is it over ten? In which case it'll return that X. So let's go down. Is it greater than forty? No. Is it greater than ten? Yes. So it goes in here. We're going to return X plus and then we're going to do the same thing minus. So yeah let's go for it. Uh, it's given us our result and now you can see here text 2 is equal to XVI, the Roman numerals, 10, 5, 1. 
and then that's being passed into this door function. So let's step. Uh, oops, I meant to step into that. <laughs> let's stop that and go back. Okay, run it again. A B C. Let's do 16. Create product key. Uh, we'll step over this one this time, and let's step into this one. And if we step in, you can see it's reversing the character array first of all. So we'll step uh, step over that and into our loop. Once we stepped over it, uh, what did it reverse? Uh, array. Uh, okay, so it's reversed this array here. You can see that it has instead of XVI, it's IVX, and then it's looping through and doing this plus each time. So let's step into it and let's step over each okay so you can see that it's subtracted oh sorry it, it added a byte to each of those values and it returns then the JW it converts it to lower and returns that so we could take this code essentially we could take this code and we could we could either modify this in place and we could pass in our result so our result was JWI we could pass in JWI and we could reverse this function so instead of calling reverse here we'll call it at the end and instead of doing plus equals we'll do minus equals and that would be a way to reverse it we could also just copy and paste this code or, or write similar code in another um, C sharp or C or Python file or anything um, or we could go to somewhere like Cyberchef. We go to Cyberchef and look at the options that we have here. We can do uh, subtract, and it was it was it was adding on one byte, and then we can also do our reverse function. So. We could be taking in the value JWI and we're subtracting one byte from each character and then we're and we're reversing it as well, giving us the XVI that we started with. Um, so there's a few different ways you could do that anyway, but we were able to essentially guess the the value was three six five. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed this challenge anyway. Uh, any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.